so hello Faye. Hi. Barbara. Um, could you begin with introducing yourself in a few words please? Yeah, I'm, I'm a singer from Holland. I am 52 years mm -hmm. and I, I mean, originally I come from Holland, I was studying and um, since uh, like 13 years I live in Cologne in Germany. Um, I've, I've, we, we've built up a family, mm -hmm. I have a German husband, so um, from, from yeah, the last more over 10 years I operate from Germany and yeah, it's, but uh, I still work a lot in Holland, so I'm a jazz singer, but uh, obviously who knows my work that knows that I'm also peeking over the borders of other styles, even in Dutch. Uh, I've been singing a lot of standards or like interpretations or arranging standards with big band, larger formations, a lot with orchestras, with, with arrangers, particular arrangers like Michael Abeni, who has really a great mastery over working with, with uh, American standards. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun to do standards when you're working with him, for instance. And since shortly, actually the passing few years, I've been writing also some tunes. Like, it's not that I call myself now also a singer-songwriter or like I'm, I'm composing, but I have a lot of fun in creating also my own music. And the last thing that I brought out is a, is a single that I wrote, a Dutch song, mm -hmm. actually. It's almost direction pop song. It's more like a storytelling thing and I wrote it for my father and it was my last single, so to say, uh, that I brought out. So I come from the jazz very deeply. Actually, I'm, I will always be a jazz singer, but I'm, I'm using, yeah, more, I'm stretching out to, to styles and, and, and doing projects. So uh, I see myself as a broad musician so to say, so. It was a fantastic answer. Yeah, a so long complete. answer, <laughs> very long. <laughs> Could you tell me what and where did you study and how did you learn music? Yeah, I studied in The Hague, in the Royal Conservatory from Den Haag. Yeah. And it's, I studied six years. I studied right away the master Mm -hmm. uh, because you you had the opportunity to to study in four years, like bachelor. It was like at that time, it was like four years for teacher. But I thought, yeah, teacher, I don't know. I want to I wanna be a performer, so I want to do like six years. And, and uh, actually before I started uh, like diving into the musical studies, I never would have thought that I would be like a study person because I, I was doing my whole youth. I was thinking I go in the direction of the theater. So I was at the theater school in Amsterdam and it was not so much like practicing your instrument eight hours a day. It was more like a study, like developing your own program who are you in this world and writing text and, and whole program. So, but I, I, I noticed that I was very young. Mm -hmm. I was young in the mind, also like 18. And I didn't know what to say on the, on stage. And I was like, wow, I need more time to develop myself in this whole, I was just like a, a muse, muses, mu mu musicality person and uh, and so I think that was more stronger developed and yeah later on I became more a person in singing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so so I, I switched studies but I didn't know what to start you know like that I had to really um, practice like four hours a day or something I didn't know what I was starting you know so and I dived really deep into it. 
and I must say also what helped uh, was that yeah that 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 I don't know if you if that is your question but like six years of study does something to you you know like you're you're getting a whole surrounding of people so you're starting to jam with them you you have a friendship you talk jazz you 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 get the language so my teachers were also playing at the jam session so actually I learned more around the whole studies than mm -hmm. only on the school you know although okay. I also had very very great lessons also history of classical music that I never thought about before or like serial uh, seriele music mm -hmm. like 12 tone mm -hmm. music I had that one year and I learned a lot from it I was like like opening my range of hearing you know and mm -hmm. uh, what I never would have thought that I would like it also or know it get to know yeah. it so I think I had a very great rich study period I really mm -hmm loved studying with my teachers also and I had a great jazz singer as example which maybe not so much as a teacher example mm. but she she was a big example in sound and in way of uh, working as a musician Rachel Gould okay you know one of the teachers and uh, I was working with um, Marjorie Barnes and and my big example was Deborah Brown. So all native speakers, like American speakers. Yeah. And uh, worked with Ineke Heiliger and worked with Judy Niemack. So I had different influences. And beside the conservatory, I worked with several classical teachers. So I was always taking lessons beside the conservatory classical teacher yeah. also we had classical technique okay. which i found very strange in the beginning <laughs> and and but but i i still also took some lessons with with a great opera singer uh, james mccray and i was studying with another great dutch classical vocalist who taught me to sing you know mm -hmm. like with the also, sometimes you you have to get some information be, beside your yeah. teachers, and you get the aha moment, you know, like like the the coin is falling into its place with some other person, and it's not like the other teachers were bad, but it's it's just another way of explaining or another moment where I feel yes, more free. Course. And sometimes it's just a kick. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had a lot of lessons. I had a lot of teachers, mm -hmm. and I'm very, and they are always with me in oh, everything that's that I great. do. Yeah. So, could you talk about the importance of transfer of knowledges for you, as a singer or as a teacher? Like to others? Yes. Or what I got from my teachers? No, 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 no. What you want to to offer, mm. to give, to show? What to I would like to give? To yes. I would like to uh, bring across love for music mm -hmm. in the first place. And love for music is, and I get a bit emotional, I feel, it's like commitment that you need in music, you know? So, um, but you know, like without being so stressful with it or like very, very uh, heavy, um, I just first I would like to bring across the yeah the relationship the bonding that you have with yourself and music and with yeah the love that you create and that you build up secondly I think it's I have a lot to offer in sense of detail uh, yeah looking looking exactly to timing or like pronunciation like articulation and mm. i'm i'm kind of a freak in those kind of things like like articulation and in the in the singing in the room like acoustic so um yeah i have there a lot to offer and also being an instrumentalist and create some some freedom in 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 hearing in the music so uh 
uh, to build up a, a, a broad fundament where above that fundament you can be very free or like completely free or with boundaries or whatever you, you want to do in music. So I like that and I like to give also so people to, yeah, to, to give them a certain mastery over what they're doing or like getting, getting a bit more aware in listening to yourself or a, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like opening things. As I got it from my teachers, I like to give that and pass that on to others too, you know. And I used to be very kind of like, you know, like very critical as I was teaching before. And I'm, I'm much more mellow now. It's, it's, it's always <laughs> coming from the heart and it's more like, you know, we're all on the way. And, and yeah. I, 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 it's also nice to work with people and to see yourself developing mm -hmm. in it, you know, like you know that as a teacher that you start and you want to do everything has to be right or good or what. No, and I'm also not singing like that anymore, you know, like I'm more into it with the heart, you know, it's all coming from the heart. So, and, but, but it still is a man craft, you know, like, like a, a hand craft. You have to get the, the elements mm -hmm. uh, also. Yeah, to become a professional. Mm. And um, so you teach quite often. So yeah, it, again, it happens. because yeah. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped quite a long time. Like uh, I was teaching from 1998, uh, no, 1998 on the conservatory. And I graduated at 1996. And I was teaching two years on a music school. And after that, since then, till 2015, I was teaching on everywhere conservatories a lot. Eh? Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. It was also like an, a calling or a second calling next to the singing. But I stopped at 2015 because I wanted to one time really to give me myself 100% energy only for singing. Mm -hmm. And um, since 2019, I started uh, in Amsterdam to do some guest uh, teaching okay. again, but not every week, but, but once a month or like some workshops uh, like, like we are doing now yeah. here, yeah. you know, so it's, it's like um, it's, it's, it's a small connection with young people, with, with my second calling, so to say. It's great. So according to you, which tradition or what of the tradi tradition is important to persist as a, as a singing teacher? Yeah, I mean, for the jazz, if, if I'm saying like I come from the jazz, um, for me, there is a language, there is an idiom and we need to learn the ingredients. But it's quite open for me and I, I, I would say like for me it was like the American songbook mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I'm also happy that I listen to a lot more music than only that of course yeah. and it's it's but it's like very strong material the form is very strong and it's very it's kind of uh, yeah like uh, iconic tunes like examples of forms where you can learn a language to communicate with each, with each other. It's like a language, you know, like, like English. It's a very good common language, mm -hmm. but I wish that I also would be able to speak French more, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and then we can communicate better, you know, or, mm -hmm. or if you know some songs, you are also uh, more in the position of exchanging yeah. with other people. But I can also imagine that if you're coming from another culture, mm -hmm. you're bringing that as an, you know, like as your language. And from there you can spread your wings and go to other. But, but my background uh, in the conservatory period was more or less bebop, swing, like, yeah, like jazz standards and stuff like that. And yeah. And so that's also what's important for you to 
Yeah, but to not persist. only. Mm -hmm. But not only. I like to broaden up from the beginning right away a bit. Um, I would say right from the beginning, start writing something. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, yeah, you 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 can you can be so. Uh, it can be also like in the early development. It can be really fantastic for somebody that. Uh, that or like it brings an, an, a great experience on stage if you do like a small own text with a with a melody or with a, with an own with, with a pianist together written or whatever like a song that can become like a life-changing uh, moment for a mm -hmm. student so I think and then because I, I was really searching a long time for the power that I have to find it in a tune like a jazz standard. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would have also wished that I had a bit more also yeah, help in finding uh, music for me now who I am in 2022, mm -hmm. you know, like that. Mm -hmm. You have to find relating to the music, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, I think um, there is a um, I like the the fundament again to to have a good pronunciation to f to know some some jazz tunes. Mm -hmm. So if you want to practice jazz music, you want to start also with some solos, listening to, you know. So that that is kind of a a basis, yeah. I think. And what about the tradition of music from your country? So. <laughs> it's like almost um, yeah I think there's beautiful theater songs like Zonder um, Jou it's a it's a beautiful tune from Annie M. G. Schmidt she's a wonderful spirit that wrote uh, books for for kids and she had a a kid's mind, a brain for kids, you know, like she, she knew exactly how to, to, to say the things that it's not so heavy, but, but still with, you know, with depth uh, yeah. in it. And so, um, the world is wonderlijk leeg zonder jou. Er staat maar zo weinig meer in. Nou ja. Hello, who can you, how can you think of such a beautiful lyric, you know? And it's, it's, it's a very sad song about, yeah, that you lose a person in mm -hmm. your life. But the way she, she says it is very original mm -hmm. to herself. So I think it's, it's wonderful to learn Dutch theater songs, you know, to, to relate with the language. And yeah, it's, it's mostly... Theater songs are musically a little bit lighter, like structured, okay. you know, like da 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 But there are also some songs that are developing in a more melodic way or like a little bit more harmony or something, mm -hmm. but it's mostly a little bit more simple, huh, of course. Mm -hmm. But but there's always a difference between Schlager and a theater song or um, Hoompapa and a, and a great, like a great <laughs> pop, a Dutch pop song, you know, like uh, Ga zitten, want ik wil eens met je praten. <laughs> ik ben nog lang niet meer zo blij als toen. And it's like like uh, Dumar. It's like a, in my youth, it was like a pop, Dutch pop, Nader pop, uh, but it's it's written in a nice way. And so you have niveau music of niveau. I would say it's maybe a little bit, uh, <laughs> but uh, you have music that is uh, the better side, or like a little bit more, uh, yeah. Huh? But has it been in one way or, or another an influence for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And uh, because I come from, uh, before I was studying jazz, I come from the theater school, okay. where theater school in Holland is Kleinkunstakademie, and it's like 
between stand-up comedian or making your own program and musical. So it was like a lot of singing and uh, writing and, and, and having opinions about politics and that's where I got really <laughs> out because I didn't have any idea when I was 18, you know, I was like, so uh, that was not for me so much in the beginning. So maybe now I start integrating a little bit of the techniques that I learned there, you know, to sing a song from, from yeah, with, uh, with a real emotion and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. And, and presenting a song, also be able that, that you're not only a musician, that, that people are looking at you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like you, it's not overacting, it's not that I'm only acting, but that you're aware of bringing a song. So mm -hmm. it's also an, uh, an important uh, layer, you know? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what does modern modernity mean to you? And do you think it's important to be modern? Very important. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm 52 now and I think it's, it's quite important to be awake, to mm -hmm. be in the here and now. And if I'm modern with that, I'm, I'm not so sure, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I hope that I will be always modern for me, but I mean, for... for so... Yeah, it's a very difficult question to, for me to, to say that. I think there is, there is some feeling like uh, what is modern and what is maybe not so modern. And I'm, I, I, it's hard to say where it's about, you know, but it, one of the things I've, I found also a person like uh, Ak van Rooyen, who was at the end 91, I found him very modern. Okay. And it's not that he did like uh, futuristic music, but the way that he's in it, it was for me very modern. So, but yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I think yeah. we as musicians, we yeah. are, uh, I try to grow, you know, and renew myself also. So, okay. Uh, yeah, but it has to also always be in balance with, you know, like I'm not doing something like completely different or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's a hard question for me to, uh, to answer. Uh, if you say like, okay, modern is um, free improvisation and old fashioned or like classical is the standards, then I say, I love free improvisation as well. I like to do it and maybe not so much to listen all the time. <laughs> oh, how much I understand you. Yeah, but, but you know, I love the, 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 the balance of a free, Im free improvised intro, if it makes sense to the story, you know, like some people can do it and really create a great sound shapes or like give me Björk I mean but I don't want to copy Björk I mean mm. Björk is Björk and she makes completely new sound shapes and new you know like but also Joni Mitchell and it's a, a lead a lead form you know like it's it's a song uh, yeah and I can only do what I can do so and you do it so well that's what we need from you. So what is the place of tradition and modernity in your, in your music? So maybe it's more specific to answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or well, how do you create the link mm -hmm. between tradition and present day artistic expression? Well, okay. So the tradition that I have uh, incorporated or like really, I, I really was into tradition and so uh, with learning a lot of solos and stuff and, and really being in that music so 
I always take the love for the music with me. For instance, for me, when I sing a solo now, I sing not a bebop solo, mm -hmm. but Barry Harris, whom, who taught me about also a lot, like everything in music, he is always in my music. It's like not literally that I'm singing his solo or that, but, but my teachers, my examples are always with me. So they are there, you know, so I can never, never say in my life that, oh, I was singing solos from that and that, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, it's always there, you know, it's, it's like one and it's, it's, it's as if you're, uh, you have been uh, growing from something. And so it, it is somewhere in my, still in my being, you yeah. know. So that is very important, but I, I also like to, uh, to write new stuff, to, to find new ways to express a new rhythm or an, I, I, I used to work a lot without drums and now I start to think a little bit more with the drummer with Martijn Fink uh, and he's also very great in jazz but also very great in pop so we, we can really do on the highest level jazz mm -hmm. also other rhythmical stuff you know and create a bit larger sound or if I'm with a big band or, or lately I've been working with a classical orchestra with my band. So we did a couple of own tunes that were quite poppy and then with the classical orchestra, you know, like, so yeah, I, I love to, to be in the here and now in this world. And uh, actually I'm quite worried also always that I keep the link with the here and now, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually occupied by it also, you know, that, that I stay in, 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 in the here and now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, and what's all happening, you know, like it's very, very, yeah, I cannot always sing that, you know, yeah. If I tell you European vocal jazz, what does it mean to you? Yeah, it's, it is different. It is different. We are a different, a different continent. So, yeah, there, then I say identity. Mm -hmm. Identity and, yeah, that we also can be proud of our own identity. And then again, I say also, we are... Um, connected as well you know so I don't want to go away from the connection to American music like yeah. American songbook mm -hmm. um, Afro-American influences and from from uh, Europe we have it downwardly to Africa but via America we also have these influences so we are connected but we can also be proud of our own sound, you know, like there is a, a different flow and a, another identity or blueprint mm -hmm. of, of Europe. So it's yeah. a different country, uh, countries, different continent, absolutely different. Okay. So what, I know the first name, I'm quite sure, but what are your influences, both from singers and instrumentalists? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. like an uh, endless uh, list of people. I mean, vocalists, really like voice, sound, like uh, singers that are, of course, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Karma McRae for storytelling and musicianship, uh, Sarah Vaughan, um, Ellis Regina, mm -hmm. the emotionality, but also the, the rhythm and the, yeah, the realness of her in, in music. So uh, the warmness also and the musicality. Joyce, uh, uh, I, I call these two names because 
In the beginning, I was not so fond of singers with a lot of vibrato. Mm -hmm. So I tend to go to singers that have a little bit more pure and clear sound. So I listened a lot to uh, Joyce, uh, um, also, uh, yeah, and then, then you have like more the, the, the spoken or like the speaking, huh? like uh, uh, Sitzel Andresen mm -hmm. and like the people that I have been, it's not so much that I'm influenced by that, but it's, it's also beautiful, you know, like I see the beauty in it that, that, that people are not so much singing, but more creating a, a, a worldly kind of mm -hmm. way of, of, or rhythmical. You have also like the, the, the rap kind of um, influences. So it's a lot, it's an endless list. And like, maybe, maybe instrumentalists? Yeah, and also men, of course, eh? like, yeah. uh, uh, like, but, but I, as I was also saying today to the singers, it's important that we are, beside that we have uh, beautiful voices that we listen to and, and great ways about singing, you also need to find somebody who is um, pronouncing and using the language that is in the, in the direction of you, where you come from, because Otherwise, it's, it's, you need to get an identity and also an example in how you pronounce that, that language also, you know. So, uh, Anita O'Day mm -hmm. or like Peggy Lee uh, for me were also very important, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, yeah, the white singers sometimes, you know, the Ju June Christie also. And I listened a lot to the freedom of Betty Carter, okay. uh, because a lot of young singers come now with jazz Maya Ho Mia Horn. Yeah. And she is very influenced by, yeah. by Betty Carter, Absolutely. of course. Absolutely. But I, I find it so nice if you hear a singer that, uh, like Kurt Elling, is very influenced by many singers, but also like we all are influenced by Al Jarreau. Mm -hmm. All are influenced by Mark Murphy. We're all influenced by Ella Fitzgerald. So uh, you cannot go around it, you know? So, and, and, but beside that, um, you hear it. I, I like to hear also with singers that they are influenced, but not stuck mm -hmm. in one way, you mm -hmm. know? Instrumentalists, yeah, Chad Baker. Ah, I was right. So that was really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because he, when he sings a solo, he's, he's singing like he's playing the trumpet and it's very natural. Mm -hmm. So I love scatting also, like scatting from Dizzy Gillespie, but it's, it's a little bit further away from my identity. Okay. And he's such a, yeah, a, like a, like an extrovert mm -hmm. spirit, you know, like in playing. So. And I'm I'm more into the 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 yeah the soundy the the smaller sound you know of the of uh, of the lines of Chad Baker and I really love also that he is it's very natural so but I love also Miles Davis and uh, Stan Getz and pff, yeah all kinds of players you know like mm -hmm. even younger generation, you know, um, I wish I Cohen, uh, which one? Uh, yeah, the trumpet player also, uh, bass player, of course, <laughs> also, but, but it's not so much my example, you know, but, yeah. you know, for the music and they're all there, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, I, I, I like, I like also the way that Sting sang for instance, these classical tunes with yeah. his normal voice. I was like, wow. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, that's, that's really what I like the most, that you create your own sound in whatever you do, that you have your sound and the way that you treat the music so that this is the pillar, mm. not the style is not your pillar, it's like your sound and what you do musically with it. I hope always that I have a kind of a pillar of what I do with the music, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. 
how much do other artistic disciplines influence your, your art? So I think painting is one of them with your new EP, Schilderij van de Liefde. But can yeah. you explain a little bit more about the yeah. other arts? Other arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love the, I mean, painting is very, it's also a philosophical thing for me. Like, uh, now I forgot the name of, Sean Scully is, for instance, an English um, painter who lives in New York, I think, where he lives in both countries. And he, 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 he just paints stripes and the stripes, but the way that two stripes meet, you know, it's like mm -hmm. the, the language or the whole world that is between the lines, you know, how they meet and what what is the character of the meeting the lines and that is for me very inspiring uh, philosophical things you know that uh, that can also be in in uh, sculpture that can also be inspiring for me I mean reading is is very mm -hmm. very inspiring for me although I started very late with like reading poems because I I, I wish I had started with that very early, you mm -hmm. know, like reading that as material for as being a singer, you know, like be, I think in the first place, I am ex, 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 um, um, I'm expressing myself through sound and not through what I say. So that's I think and that's OK now, you know, like I, I can say like, Oh, I should have started earlier to learn to compose or whatever, or, or like writing lyrics. And I'm I'm struggling now with it, you know, to find the right words. Not like, huh? my brother in music is uh, David Lynx, and he is a creator and he's a writer, you know. So so he started with that like million years ago. <laughs> so he has already. You know, like the man craft and then the whole, it's, it's like on a complete other level. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, and for mm. me, it's like more about sound and uh, yeah, bringing across now also lyrics, but, but it's more about the sound, actually what I, and, it, and, the, and the, the vibrations, the vibrations of okay. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What is the role of melody? for you in the music? A very big role. Mm -hmm. Not It doesn't have to always be like like we, we sing, David and I, we sing a, a song on one tone. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, but that is also very and philosophical. So we have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And then there is something else, you know, that, that you are, you are going a little bit around that, you know. No, melody is... Uh, Melody is almost a forgotten big animal that is almost rotten out, you know, like really. Melody is very, I think it's something, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really fit in this, in this era or something. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. <laughs> I mean, have you heard some of the melodies like uh, nowadays, you know, like yeah. even the, the voices are through a box and they they get straightened and robot. tuned and robot voice. Yeah, and I yeah. also like that. I know I know that this is also a nice effect, and I, mm -hmm. I love it also sometimes. This and it's it's all. I love when it's done right and great for the purpose. You know, it's. It, but I also realize that a certain uh, transpense transparency <laughs> no transparency and lifeliness and um, yeah that that it's a little bit getting out you know mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. so I, I I also said that today to the singers okay. a little bit and yeah. you work a lot on interpretation so for example when you have a jazz standard do you prefer to stay close to what's written or is it really important for you to find a personal way to express yourself yeah. in, in, the, in the interpretation. Yeah, sure, sure. That, mm -hmm. is, that is very important. And I, 
Of course, uh, the melody is a structure and I think there is a lot of beauty in getting to know also exactly the melody, of course, mm -hmm. because you learn a certain energy bow also from that. So if you right away go away from it, and I did that also all the time, and I, and I, I realized only later that I, as a kid, I was already improvising a lot because I, I was not listening to jazz, uh, not yet, but, but for instance, Diana Ross or something, and then I was not singing the melody, but I was singing already around it, you know? Okay. So I probably was already exercising a little bit for later, you know, to get <laughs> more into free, freeing up or mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, widen your ear, you know, in the chords and, and going around it. But um, I also heard some terrible examples of being uh, like without any boundaries anymore. So if you start singing a beautiful tune like My Funny Valentine and you sing no, no any note of the melody and you say like My Funny Valentine and there is no chords and there is no or, or there is no reference anymore where the line started and via what and to where did it go then yeah maybe then it's too much of course huh? and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. i think there is always uh, a good balance of of a, a great song that want to be sung and you can you can do that with a shine or you can break down the tune yeah. <laughs> and make it terrible, you know, like, so, so it's all about, um, balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And taste. Huh? So some people say like uh, music is about timing and taste. And of course, taste is also then again, because, um, I don't want to say you don't have to mess with a melody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be so strict, yeah. you know, because I, I didn't like so much when people say that to me. So I would like to give some room for self-expression, but I also like when it's fundamented in knowing where you come from. So, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since it is a standard, yeah. you know, that we're talking about. But then, then, then make your own tune and make it very free, you know. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. You sing mainly in English, but also sometimes in Dutch or maybe sometimes also in other lang languages? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, bit. one or two mm -hmm. songs in Brazil. So, so, is it um, important to you the, the language you use when you sing? So, yeah. do you sing differently when you use one or the other language, you think? Very good question. Um, I think it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Uh, the Dutch song, uh, like Zonder Jou, that I didn't write myself. So it's, it still is very close to your culture, your, the language culture. So um, I guess so it is. But I also heard some native speaker singers that, that I found, um, okay, this, this doesn't sound like you, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. also you, there is a level of really getting at home with a song or with a language. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's, it's possible to also be at home in a certain way in, in English, you know? Mm -hmm. But, I, but I, I really find it very special to sing my own written tune, you know? Like, yeah. about, like a personal song for, written for my father and it was like yeah. really... That was really very close for me. Yeah. It was yeah, different. I understand. Uh -huh. yeah. And this is going to my next question. Do you mainly write the lyrics you sing when it's not a standard or a cover? Sorry? So when, when Sorry? it's not a standard mm. or a cover, you know, some, another pop tune or I don't know. Uh, is it only you writing the lyrics you sing? Um, no, no, I, I, I mostly, 
I work together with an, uh, yeah, with a lyric writer okay. or like a writer, okay. you know. So I have two people that I I refer to. One is um, is um, Ruud Meyer in Holland, and he is also a journalist, but he writes his own lyrics also, and he's very good at English also. Mm. So, and but uh, my tune for my father, yeah. I wrote that with him. So okay. he, he Dutch is his, okay. uh, mm -hmm. his um, native speaker Dutch, but he's a very yeah, he, he understands the profession of lyric writing, mm -hmm. ri mm -hmm. lyric writing, and I, that is that is not my, but I but I was re very happy to, you know, to work on my 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 uh, lyrics. So, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, um, there is another tune from uh, the bassist that I play with uh, Theo de Jong, yeah, and he wrote a tune for Toots, yeah, and it's about. Uh, music is between a tear and a smile, huh? he mm -hmm. always said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and so I wrote English lyrics about that, and the 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 the, the final sentence is this this statement of him, you know, and uh, um, the tune is called "Smiling Tear." So, and I actually wrote it myself completely alone, and then there was like a few points that I was not so happy with, like a word that rhymed you know like it was a rhyme word but it was not so strong the word so i phoned uh Ruth and said like oh can you maybe help me very quickly with this you know and i was singing it for him and then he came up with a fantastic solution you know oh so wow. yeah like amazing it is a little bit with the help but with the song for my father he helped in a bigger way yeah. like in you really in, worked together yeah, yeah. we really mm -hmm, worked together mm -hmm. so it's it's yeah different and but i um it costs a lot of time for me to yeah. work on on a tune yeah like text or something same for me yeah 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 also because it's not my native language as it's it's not yours either yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, Why don't you sing in uh, French? Uh, oh, I the whole know, time. I'm, I'm just used to singing in English because I began yeah. music with with jazz, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I can only sing in, in English. I think. Yeah, that's the only way for okay. me to sing. So when I sing in ah. French, it's, I think it's so strange. But I do it yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And every and every time I'm doing it, it's like all the, the public and the audience like wow it's so beautiful you should, you should do it more but then why don't you do it more because I it's like everybody I understands I'm, more stuck. Yeah, i'm stuck yeah. with it yeah I'm, music is in english for me but la belle yeah. dame sans regret of and course the, it's, it's so like, beautiful <laughs> yeah but it's it's nice that he he has done one french song or maybe maybe more but uh, mm. i think so yeah you also sing uh, sometimes without any lyrics. Yeah. So, uh, is so you use your voice sometimes really as an instrument without any, any words. So, is it important and easy for you to convey emotion uh, only with your voice and without any story, written story, let's say? Yeah. I think so, but it's different because it's like more in in the in the melodic melodic development, and then in in for instance, if I if I get a tune that is in an atmosphere already, like Cinema Paradiso, for yeah. instance, it's film music, and I have the the the, the story or like the atmosphere of the of the movie and it's very easy to get into a certain emotionality huh? like mm -hmm. it's it's this sound shape and it's film music so but but yeah so that is maybe the story on its own then the mm -hmm. atmosphere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um yeah it's maybe not always the same you know so uh it depends on the the art of the tune you know like the yeah. the 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 direction that you're going and it doesn't have to be also emotional in the way of sad or something 
Like it can also be happy. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Emotion Something can be whatever. Like hip yeah. or like, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I like also the different atmospheres. Huh? And uh, yeah, I think um, it comes more with lyrics, mm -hmm. with a story that you can unfold, you know, like the first time you sing it this and the second time, or like you have more refrain, like more couplets and then a refrain and then on top of that a C part because mm -hmm. you know like yeah. you have a development and a story mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah you have a mm -hmm. uh, vocally you have a huge palette vocal palette with many many different colors um, so do you do you really work on your sound of, on the sound of your voice or is it something just coming naturally to you or yeah I haven't been working on my sound so much mm -hmm. uh, I have been doing a lot of music just like if you're looking at my place it's like tons of arrangements and the project for the Chet Baker the two portraits of Chet Baker yeah. was already learning to use the voice mm -hmm. in that way mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like and believe me that was really a big risk for me as a singer to be yeah i mean okay let's there's so much stuff let let us just record two cds and one with only instrumental themes like mm -hmm. with the uh, jerry mulligan kind of without the piano like more interactive being interactive with a baritone saxophone mm -hmm. so i am the trumpet and he is the Yeah, the, the Jerry Mulligan uh, voice and we're improvising also so that was already a study on its own you know like picking the tunes and then okay then let's do a whole CD with only those improvising vocalese stuff you know and the other CD was then with all the songs so only that and then doing that in the concertgebouw in the big room and i was like i was terrified i was like oh my god in the in the first set we're gonna do only without words you mm -hmm. know i was like oh maybe people are going to walk away you know it's not interesting and at the end it turned out to be that people really loved this way of interaction yeah, you know of course. and they mm -hmm. they liked it mm -hmm. but it was a big risk for me i felt like a big uh, big Uh, risk and so I and really the the arrangements that I learned from Michael Abeni uh, with the VDR big band they they taught me where I want to be as is in the arrangement and where I have the freedom to really interpret uh, something doing something else with the melodies and that, that was actually also a very broad project from Ella mm -hmm. to Björk really yeah. mm -hmm. like Ella for, It was all singers, examples for me, women in music, that gave me a palette, you know, like of, of sound. And then with Bob Brookmeyer, he invited me on uh, standards. That was another um, amazing uh, development for sound because it was like the arrangements are, are the big, Mm -hmm. the, there was always Bob Brookmeyer there be, above this music and I was the band singer kind of it's not the fake class show you know mm -hmm. like ah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a long bow of his work you know like first with an intro and then somewhere I come in and when you come in then you really have to come in you know like that was the one of the the biggest initiations in music for me you know to to be able to come into like love for sale for god's sake and then and then really also in this tempo of his uh, yeah i couldn't have done it uh, if i wouldn't have had my recording like red hot and blue with this long yeah. slow tempo And I think he heard that, and that also gave him the, the, the idea to do it like this. The thing, like, okay, yeah. she she knows, 
yeah, what she, she what to do, do in yeah. this in this tempo also, and 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 he did those arrangements already with another theatrical singer, and he didn't like that, so he wanted to make really recordings of his arrangements with a singer that had his taste or like at least that he liked mm -hmm. doing his arrangements. Mm -hmm. So he was really looking for some years to find somebody he said to us, so it's like really. Okay, so let's talk about improvisation. Yeah. What is the role of improvisation in your music? A big role, mm -hmm. but I must say not so schoolish anymore as it used to maybe be. Like uh, sing a theme and then a solo and a solo and a solo and a solo and sing the theme. So I would like to, yeah, to, to use it in different ways, in different textures, sometimes not so much, but just here and there a little. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And did, did you learn specifically how to improvise? Yeah, I had also main, main course, second main course improvisation with my piano, with the piano teacher okay. in the conservatory. Mm -hmm. And um, I had like two years main course, like a singing course and improvisation with mm -hmm. him. So I, I had really with an instrumentalist, I had lessons like a lot of Tristano or themes or a lot of material like singing over certain chord changes like uh, uh, conception, deception, the, the difference between the yeah. harmony, harmony, how mm -hmm. to sing over it and lines and so I was diving a little bit deeper into it. Okay, yeah. and now does it come naturally when you have to improvise or do you really still have to work on difficult chord progressions or...? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if I do now like a real difficult chord progression, I also start by learning okay. the chords and getting some, gathering some ideas and lines and to come out in the next chord and yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. But but maybe not always, you know, okay. like it depends okay. on the material that mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Oh, we have neighbors now. <laughs> uh, what is your relationship to harmony? Um, do you work... Close harmony? Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely no relationship and I wish I had more okay. mm -hmm. close harmony singing now. I know what you mean. So harmony... Yeah, it's also rhythm. For me, is harmony is also rhythm because you mm -hmm. you break the harmony in notes and it's fun, you know, like to be instrumentalistic with the harmony. So it's it's rhythm, and I love Bach also. I mean, the, it swings like hell. Yeah, it's great. I did a project with a classical pianist who used to only play Bach together with an other pianist who is not classical, so okay. like modern in the sense of popular music. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we did a project and I was in the middle always and the two pianists and then we did even like a jazz standard, like you'd be so nice to come home to with Bach lines that were fitting because we found out that that the, the chord changes of Bach were the same as you'd be so nice to come home to it fitted okay. so we put the line so we fitted that under the places where it fitted and we did that really I was like but I I found almost the Bach accompaniment more swinging in, you know, like yeah. it's very, it's Bach is very amazing. It, of course, of a, who am I to say? But you know, like the broadness and the and the richness, it comes out in the swinging. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing. I really, that was for me another level of appreciation. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, really amazing. I really would like to do a Bach tune sometime, you know, like... Uh, I did that also with Paquito de Rivera, <laughs> but it was like a choir, like okay. a long... Mm -hmm. It was not so much Bach movemental, but with, with, um, I, I remember 2007 or something with Paquito de Rivera, we, we did a choral to, together, it was amazing. So next album is Portrait of Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Take lesson. <laughs> well, a, lo a lot of work to do. <laughs> do you think that the syllables you use to improvise are in one way or another based on the tradition? So you told us it is the case. Um, but maybe you also have another approach than the, than the American tradition when you improvise? Yeah, you have different styles. Eh? Sometimes mm -hmm. a certain song or a direction or like certain music asks for a certain idiom. Mm -hmm. So that could be that, that you go into a little bit more scatty way or if, if you, yeah, or, or but I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. So Sometimes you can, I think, yeah, if you talk about the European way, huh? mm -hmm. like improvising is, it's a bit a, a different flavor, a different flavor of rhythm, but also a different flavor of um, harmony. Um, it can come a bit from classical. It can uh, be a little bit more Scandinavian, a bit wider. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's it's maybe less songy. It's more like textures or like mm, on one chord or something or like more free. So um, I I think there is a different atmosphere okay. between. I mean, standardly uh, yeah. spoken, huh? like mm -hmm. like generally spoken, Americans is is more into these songs or I think in the form. And, and uh, or traditional or popular yeah. and and in Europe you have uh, artistical it's a bit more yeah could be a little bit more spacey <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and it asks also for another sound of course huh? yeah. another other scat words or like other yeah, other way of doing it. So every music, what you do, asks for a different thing. Yeah. To, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you told you told us that your brother David Links yeah. is one of the best. And uh, do you also have other names of European vocal singer? Yeah, vocalists. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I'm not so very good at that. Actually, really names, but um, or one name, or just yeah. I mean, w I love uh, Norma Winston, but I I think there's you know like oh, also when I'm improvising, I'm also not too much one to even if it's like a song with uh, like uh, chords and stuff. Mm -hmm. I also. I don't also want to be so uh, so so uh, strict on using always the same uh, scat words, for instance, okay. or where I come from. Mm -hmm. I let I really let it go, and I don't want to uh, don't want to to have that only in my you know like as a as an example. Yeah. And I'm I'm not sure which singers will. Let, let me see. Um, we have some, in Holland, we have Sanne Rambachs that I like as a young, great spirit, you know, like that, that is a nice singer. And, and Anna Serierse, she's a young singer that is a beautiful singer. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is your relationship with your voice, with your instrument? Ah, uh, very, 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 very... Yeah, it's kind of, it has two things. Like, I'm very, so you so, I'm, I'm a person that is 
I'm very occupied by health and keeping myself in form because it is a, a long bow, you know, like your whole life mm -hmm. to, to keep in form. It's like sport, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to keep myself in form and do sport and and also uh, treat the, the voice gently, kind of. So mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. warm up or do some stuff. At the other hand, I, I, there is also, I have had a long life of singing already. So there is some, you know, what is, um, uh, it's like, how do you say that in English? Um, not damage, but mm -hmm. but you know, like if you are uh, by using it a lot, you know, you have like some cracks yeah. or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm very very aware of that, and I also did some time some looking at it, you know. Yeah. So, and uh, so I'm aware that I have to really also be um, yeah be yeah. good to myself. So in order to um, not uh, overdo it you know yeah. so I think everybody and I think every musician has to uh, stay in good contact with himself or herself you know to yeah to uh, yeah to to, uh, to be able to do this long trip mm -hmm. you know and to be to stay also on top of you mm -hmm. know I mean I know some musicians that have stopped playing because they cannot fulfill their level anymore and that's that's sad I think I I love the the if maybe if I'm 91 okay I cannot sing anymore but Ak van Rooyen he's my big example in that case he played until 91 mm -hmm. and he played great how is that possible? He was not like, like trembling or like weak, uh, yeah. but he made use of his energy until the last moment, and he divided it in in a way, and and you can only do that yourself. You can mm -hmm. only um, have contact with yourself to 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 be able to know what you can do. And you know, like, and if you overdo it or you give too much straining or too much energy, then then maybe you cannot keep it till the end. Yeah. You know, so it is philosophically, it's interesting, you know, how you how you deal with that, yeah. you know, and also um, yeah, with the rest, you know, like mind here in in music, that you keep yourself fresh in the thought and. Yeah, light and that you renew yourself. And it's not always easy, you know, like mm -hmm. you get a lot of no's or uh, that person is there and I'm not. Or, or, you know, you have to keep yourself also in the middle and with both feet on the ground. Yeah. And But if you want to grow and if you have dreams, you also want to go for that, you know, so think big. But then at the end, give it back to the earth. <laughs> the tai Chi. It's like, yeah. think big or like you really punch and then, okay. I think that was the most beautiful words for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest. And it was well, super. Thank you.